In example 11, we'll learn how to mirror and then move. We are either continuing on from tutorial number 3, or you can open the drawing if you saved it. We'll find mirror under the Edit tab. We've set the shortcut key to the letter I, so you can press I on your keyboard as well. When you choose Mirror, it says Select Objects. The objects we're going to mirror are all six tops. So we'll select them and then follow through with the finish. And then we will be asked for two points of a mirror line. If we want these parts to be mirrored over here to the left, then our mirror line would be this edge of the rectangle. We'll use snaps so our mirrored copies will be aligned straight. We'll pick one end of the rectangle for the first point of the mirror line, and then the other end of the rectangle for the second point. If we choose yes to keep the original, we'll end up with the original geometry and the mirrored copies as well. The mirrored copies to the left. Since we normally don't want both mirrored and unmirrored copies, let's undo. Let's mirror again. This time, let's mirror our parts within our rectangle. When you choose mirror and it says select, you can either select or you can choose previous. Previous selects what was selected last. After you're finished selecting, you still have to finish. As we mentioned before, we'd like the parts to mirror within the rectangle. Kind of like a revolving door. So, we'll use the middle of the top edge of the rectangle for the first point of the mirror line, and then the middle of the bottom edge for the second point of the mirror line. And this time we'll say no to keep the original. The second part of example 11 is to move all of the tops to a specific location. So we'll start by offsetting construction lines for a reference point. We'll go to Offset, and I'll start with a distance of 4. Click OK, select the line, and select the side. Finish, and repeat the process for the top. And now we have an intersection that we can move our parts to. So we'll choose Move, and when it says Select Objects, I'm going to use the Previous button again. And then, of course, we'll have to finish when we're done selecting. For the base point, we'll want to grab our parts by the intersection. And then we'll choose the intersection of the two flats of the part on the upper left corner. And then we'll set it down at the intersection of the two lines that we offset. Remove the construction lines with either Delete or Clear Memory. And that completes Example 11. In Example 12, I'll talk about some of the details of the Offset command, and then we'll work through different examples and options to extend. We'll start by looking at some of the settings in Offset. I'll demonstrate and work with the two islands on the left side. And for these examples, I'll just set the distance to 2. And we have used these settings many times, with line and arc selected, and offset as geometry unchecked. This time, if we check offset as geometry, 
say OK, and select a side to offset. It works the same as before, except comes out on a different color, green, which is a layer named geometry. We can also choose what to offset as geometry instead of a line and arc. When we offset geometries, they will, by default, come out on the color green. This works like it did before. We'll select what we want to offset, and then select the side. The difference being, it will offset the entire geometry that was joined together. We can see that the object was joined if you have Show Breaks turned on. With Show Breaks turned on, you will see the white X's. Each join geometry will display only one white X. If we unjoin or explode one of the islands, offset will work differently. You can find explode on the edit tab or you can type X for explode. As prompted, select one of the islands and then finish. Now we can see breaks at the end of each segment. Now if we choose to offset again, and even if we have the same setting of offset the entire geometry selected, we will still only be offsetting individual lines and arcs because they're not joined together. Whereas the island below that is still joined will offset the entire join geometry with the exact same settings. Many times, geometries are easier to work with when they're exploded. For instance, I can now easily delete the top edge of this island. Whereas, the one that's still joined will be selected and then deleted all as one. We can rejoin the remaining edges that are connected together at the endpoints. When we choose Join and are prompted to select our objects, we can select them individually or we can window. The only things that can be joined are the ones that are perfectly touching or connecting at the endpoints. And even though we selected the three segments at the bottom, they will not be joined in any way because they are not connected at the endpoints of anything. And when we finish, we can see that they are joined because there's only one white X on each piece of geometry. We can still connect these segments together using fillet with a zero radius. When we use fillet to connect two segments, they will also become joined together as one. We can also use fillet to connect the ends of this object to make it a closed shape. Next, let's add four inches to the length of our countertops. We'll start by exploding one so we can work with the segments individually. Then we'll offset the end by four inches. So we'll change the distance to four and we'll select to offset just a singular liner arc and then we'll check offset as geometry so it will come out on the green geometry layer. And because it's been exploded, we can delete a singular segment. The offset line that we created will be used as the boundary line in Extend. A boundary line can be a containment or an object to extend other lines to. 
So we'll select the new edge as the boundary and then of course we'll finish. Now we can extend each line that we want to extend to the boundary. We can even use extend to extend the lines of the other countertop to the same boundary that we used on the first one. Let's start by exploding the countertop and because we have a reference or boundary line on the other countertop we can delete this end. Now to have these lines extend the same distance or to the same boundary we'll select extend again and then we'll select the same boundary to extend the other lines too. After we selected the line of course we'll finish and then we'll select the ends of the lines to extend to the boundary. And as you can see they extend the same length even though they're not actually touching that boundary. Since we've already deleted the original end of this countertop we can draw a new line snapping to the end of and the end of the other lines. Another way to extend is to use extend by distance. This would be used if you knew an exact value to extend the length of a line or an arc. When you choose extend by distance, set the length in the distance field. I'll use four and then click OK. Then as prompted, select the end of each line that you would like to extend four inches. If you click on a line multiple times, it will extend that increment with each click. If an object is joined, it will extend to the closest open side or nearest to the break point. We can also use extend by distance to shorten a line or arc segment. We'll have to finish and open extend by distance back up and then we'll type in a negative value to shorten our lines and arcs. Each click will shorten that segment by the negative value that we entered into the distance. If you'd like to measure something, there are a couple different ways. You'll find them under the CAD tab. Distance and angle is like using a tape measure. You can select the first point and then select a second point. I'll select the ends of my rectangle from bottom left to top right. The distance displayed is the actual distance between those two points and then I can also see the X and the Y value independently. Another thing we can do is apply dimensions. Dimensions are easy to use and apply if we have the proper settings. If we want the dimensions on a horizontal line it's very important that we have horizontal selected. Then if we want the entire length of the horizontal line dimensioned, we can pick on it as it says on the prompt below. Then after clicking on it, you can pull or slide it to a location and click again to set that dimension down. You can change the size of the text and many other features by going to the configure tab. There you'll see the height of the text and arrow size and gap if you want to get real fancy. And since we're still in horizontal mode let's say OK and click on that line again. Then we'll click a spot to set it down and the 4 inch tall font is much easier to see. Dimension lines can be deleted as normal. 
Next, let's apply some vertical dimension lines. So it's important that we have vertical selected before we click OK. We can either click to pick on the line to get the dimension of the entire line, or we can get the dimension between two specific points. Use snaps for accuracy. I'll choose the dimension between this endpoint and the intersection of these two lines. For dimensioning any direction other than horizontal or vertical, I would use aligned. It works the same as the others, but gives the distance, not just the X or Y. And like before, you can select an entire line or pick between two points. Thank you for choosing Park Industries. Thanks.